What if there was no scientific problems with Darwinian evolution? What if all of the assumptions were actually not, not assumptions? What if there was a complete consensus amongst all of, biology, all of the biological, biological community that Darwinism is the most uh, the, the best theory which actually explains all of the data that we have and if all of these things existed and you had this amazing coherent theory which everybody agreed in the scientific community is the right model to explain biological life what would be the response in terms of what would be the sort of Muslim response that you know you have this basically scientific theory, which uh, supposedly challenges theology, challenges the Islamic conception of God, but also challenges the creation of man. What do we actually do? I, I, we actually do nothing because it doesn't matter if there was a complete consensus in terms of the scientific community for this theory. Because at the end of the day, the philosophy of science is timeless. So the problem of induction would still be there. The problem of underdetermined underdetermination uh, of scientific theory by evidence would still be there. The problem of philosophical and methodological naturalism and the conflation of the two would still be there. So it wouldn't really even matter if there was a complete consensus in the biological community about Darwin's theory and if we couldn't point out to a single issue in terms of science of this theory. So even if there was no problems, we could still point at the philosophy of science and say, look, it's not absolutely true, just like no other scientific theory can be absolutely true because of these things. Now, we don't necessarily have to give examples in terms of problem of induction or examples in terms of underdetermination of scientific theory by evidence and neither, uh, neither the implications of you know, holding a methodologically, uh, sorry, holding a philosophical naturalistic worldview and how that would lead you to maybe a conflation between philosophical naturalism and, and methodological naturalism. We don't need to do any of those things. All we need to do is point and say, look, the philosophy of science is there, so you can't claim that this scientific theory is absolutely true. Now, another question may come to your mind, which is what's the point of having all of these videos on this channel and having debates and having lectures and you know having this sort of uh, dialogue what's the point if all that really matters at the end of the day is that we need to look at the philosophy of science to understand that no scientific theory can be absolutely true well there is no point in one sense because you're absolutely right we don't need to point at scientific issues and say um, you know this is why the theory is not absolutely true we can just point conceptually at the philosophy of science but the reason why this is done is to give active examples of the problem of induction and other problems in the philosophy of science and how they applied to Darwin's theory and the reason why we do this is because there is a massive difference between the public understanding of Darwin's theory and the academic understanding and obviously there's a big difference between the two so in summary, it doesn't actually matter if there was no problems, no scientific problems with Darwinian evolution. All that really matters is that we need to look at the philosophy of science and understand that science doesn't lead to absolute certainty. For more videos about Darwinian evolution, make sure you subscribe to Darwinian Delusions.